Hi, and welcome to Think Bowling. This is the second part of the innovative vacuum jig setup. We're gonna to talk today about how to set up actual press itself. We put the press on the stand already, um, and you'll see a little bit of, you already saw a little bit of footage of that. Uh, for safety reasons, you wanna use a heavy duty jack when putting them onto the press, um, especially in when you need, you don't have that many people to help you. So it's always safer to do it that way. The first step you're gonna to need to do is uh, grab the big wrench, and you're gonna to wanna to loosen the bolts on the side. Uh, I already pre-loosened these, so these are loose so that the head can move. You're also gonna to wanna to grab the crank handle for the head, and you're gonna to gonna to wanna to grab the second largest Allen wrench that comes with it, and you're gonna to wanna to put the Allen wrench on the flat spot. There's a flat spot on that side of the head over here. Once you get that into place and tighten it down, you'll be able to crank the head up. As you're cranking the head up, you might wonder where to stop. There's a black line under the head that will allow you to see where you want to stop. You want to kind of hold the head close to center so it doesn't get too far off. And right there is the beginning of it. After the head is in place, you want to grab your centering rod, put your centering rod in the chuck, Make sure it's tightened. You wanna roll this down slowly, and you wanna push the head over until it's until the centering rod hits. There's a point in the center of the cup, and we'll show a close-up of that. And that's gonna give you a generic center. That's not 100% accurate. You'll still have to zero out the press once you get it up, but you can tighten the bolts down and make sure that the head is tightened. And start from there. You might have to make adjustments after the fact, and we'll go through that as we walk through it. You can take the centering rod out now and put that off to the side. We'll put the drill bit carousel on really quick so that that's out of the way. So you take the spindle, that's in place. Uh, you can also angle it depending on what you want. Make sure that it's tight once you have it in the right position. And if you don't like the position of it, you can always loosen it and fix it again. And then you put all your drill bits in there according to the size. Plug cutter is another thing that also came with it. There's a spot in the table to put the plug cutter if you want to use it. But we're going to use it to help center up the table. So I'm going to put that in the chuck a while. Before we center up the table completely, put the vacuum press on. So when you're attaching the vacuum hose, slide it on. Keep pushing. You know, it's difficult. You got to wiggle it light a little until it gets the whole way up against the nut. So when you're zeroing up the press, you're gonna to wanna to put this down, put a bowling ball that's not been resurfaced and is in uh, good condition. You're gonna bring it down a little bit and you're gonna give yourself a little bit of a gap. So it may be hard to tell, but you should be able to see that this side is a little closer than this side. So that means that your press is a little off and you need to adjust it. So I'm gonna get down here, try to... So that looks like that's pretty close. You're gonna do it on both, both forward and reverse and make sure that it's the same each way. It might take you a couple checks to do it. With the angle that you're at, you won't be able to see it, but I'm adjusting it forward and reverse as well. And then you'll double check it again. If you check it with the ball up against the ball, it will seem as though it's zero, zero. You might have a slight gap over here, but it's, it's a little bit easier if you're off the, off the ball just a hair because that way you can, you can see it for sure. So once you think you have it in place, the true test is turning the vacuum on or clamping the ball into place and then using it. If it cuts into the bowling ball, it's not zero. You need to adjust it and do it again. That's the only true way to check it to make sure that it's zero, zero. And then we will adjust the press to zero position to show that that's correct. As you can see from moving the press around, it's not, it's not at zero. So if the bowling, the, the, the plug cutter's at zero and you know it's 100% zero, you need to adjust this part. So you will want to spin the dial back up to zero and lock it back into place so that you know it's at zero each and every time. So that's very important. If you ever find it when you're using the plug cutter that's cutting into the ball, the press is shifted in some way and not exactly at zero. So you should go through the process again of, of re-zeroing it. And you wanna do that both with the forward and reverse, which this is, or the left-right, uh, which 
is on the side of the press. So you would want to check both of those and reset both of those to zero when needed. So this little knob that you use, this is to use to adjust the belt tightness. And you can see, you can pull this in and out depending on what you want. But obviously you don't want the belt slipping and they're gonna stretch out over time. So you should definitely uh, adjust this, push the flap down to tighten it and it's in place. It's not gonna move. And when you wanna loosen it, just turn it up and you can push it in. Uh, this would be necessary if you wanted to replace the belts. This is the drill press stop. The head comes down, you pull the head down. If you wanted to stop it in place, use the brake on the side here. To release, re release the brake, you just pull down and it'll go back up. Um, best thing is not to re release it and just let it go. It'll slam into it and it's just not good for the head. This is the spring to determine how fast the head will go up. You can adjust this if you like, it's up to you. Okay, so the power cord was attached. I already took it off. There's a, it come with a zip tie. So just cut the zip tie off and you can un take down the power cord, plug it in. So the front, front knobs you have here, first they're spring loaded. You can pull them out and set them into a certain position. This is good for when you're locking down the table. What you use these for is when you're overling left to right to make sure that the table isn't shifting from vibrations. You put these, these are basically stops to lock them into place and they're important to use. Uh, when you're turning the, moving the press, setting pitches or something like that, you wanna release both the brakes, just like driving your car with the brakes on. If you're cranking the press left and right with the brakes on, it's not good for the press itself. So you should release these whenever you're putting pitches into the ball. Um, they're good for when you're ovaling so that the ball does not walk and you don't have as much uh, issues with the thumb hole shifting around. These two knobs here are also brakes as well. Uh, these are for forward and reverse. These are also important when you're doing ovals uh, to make sure that these are tight so that the ball does not shift or walk while you're ovaling. So I have the vacuum on. Uh, you can also do this without the vacuum. You can use the clamps to clamp it into place. So I'm gonna turn it on, come down slowly. So if you're coming down and you start cutting into the ball like that, you're not exactly zero. You need to figure out where you're, where you're rubbing at. And it feels like back here is cutting. Well, right here is cutting a little bit. So it's, you just go to this angle, look at how it needs to be adjusted and adjust it accordingly. So as I'm tapping down into it, you can see like a little bit of come off, but it should be perfect now. Your handles, there's an Allen key in there already. Just find a wrench that matches up to it. Put it on the press. Turn it till tight. There you go. So you have a, a ring. It's for a jig. Uh, it's good for using when ovaling. And sometimes when you have a ball that doesn't have good pressure, lock it in place. Uh, you have double nuts here. You screw the, the post the whole way into the very bottom. Uh, if you do not, the post will wear out. This is soft aluminum and it will eventually wear out the holes and you will need to replace either the plate or uh, have a machine shop drill the holes out and put different holes in for you. Uh, so adjust the nuts up so that you can, you can set them for yourself. Turn the post in until you hit bottom and then you want to adjust the nuts down so that they're flush. Do the exact same thing on the other side. When you're first setting this up, this is very important. Uh, afterwards, the nut should stay in place and you shouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, the posts come with three washers. I think three washers is a little too many. Uh, I would just take off one washer and put it to the side and use two washers. One thing that's important is not to put extra stress on a press. Uh, on the plate and the, and the bolts. So I recommend getting one of the, uh, a level. So you can see exactly where level's at on the press. You get it level and then you'll tighten it down to make sure that it's right. Cause if you don't, you're gonna put stress on one post more than another and you're gonna end up wearing out the holes. Once you're done with it, set it to the side and then you can go ahead and, and drill the ball or cut it down. So you have two drill bits here. You can see one, the, the shaft is longer than another. Uh, the shorter shaft is called a tour cut. You can order your drill bits like that for your drill press. Uh, they're, they're good for a keyless chuck because they go the whole way in and touch the top. What you'll find with all your ITs and all your switch grips, it's gonna have the longer shaft. So when you put it in, if your head's set, if your head's not set correctly, 
you won't be able to get the bit in the press. So you want to make sure you set your head up specifically for the longer bits so that you don't have to worry about this issue. If you set up your, your drill press for the shorter bits and you go to try to use a longer bit, you're going to end up having to raise your head and reset everything and go through the whole process again. So just make sure when you're doing this, you, you grab a bit that has a longer shaft when you, when you do your initial setup of your press and then you won't, won't have to do it again. So when you get your drill press, you can get a wrench. Uh, this is for the keyless chuck. As you can see the grooves here and then there'll be one on the backside. Uh, this is very important for when you over the hole, you put the drill bit in, hand tighten it, and then use the wrench. And you wanna tap on it to make sure that it's tight. Uh, this will keep the drill bit in place. Uh, when you oval, make sure that it doesn't walk and make sure that the hole doesn't become cone with a loose drill bit. It's very important when you're ovaling a lot that you use the wrench to make sure that the bits are tightened in there. So the last step of the process is to make sure that your uh, zero depth is set for drilling the hole. So we'll show that in a minute, but you have to have a, a, a hole that you can check it against. So I'm gonna just drill a small hole in here, show where the zero point is at, and then we'll go up and show the other part. So when you, you drill that initial hole, you wanna come down to right where the drill bit's touching, lock the drill press into place so that you know that that's at zero, and then you wanna come up and reset the jig up here. So we're at zero, zero as far as drilling depth, but you can see that we're not at zero as far as on the drill press. Drill press would need to be here for zero, and we're at around here. So. Sometimes you can adjust this up or down, mainly up and down, or you can adjust this. Both of them are at their max height. So there's two, there's two options here. Either you can put a wax pencil as that zero, or you can adjust the head so that the head's at zero at this spot. Obviously adjusting the head's gonna take a little bit longer, but I would recommend doing that so that you're 100% accurate. On the top, we have the pulleys. Um, they're set up for the drill press. I've never adjusted these, but if you would like to adjust them, there's a speed chart up top here on the, on the lid, um, and that'll give you the different variations of, of what you can do with the belts. And you would want to loosen the motor, obviously, to, and let, let the slack off the motor to be able to adjust that. One of the lesser known things of the drill press is you can tighten this knob, and that activates the head. And what this will do is allow you to oval, or go to a certain depth precisely each time. Any questions or comments, leave them down below and hope you enjoyed the video.